Welcome back to the Feature Crew, everyone. Today is the big day. After weeks, maybe even months of rumors uh, and weird interactions from Sam Altman on Twitter, we finally have an answer to what OpenAI's next big release is. And it is a, uh, it is a new model, but it's not a larger model. It's a new type of model. Uh, and they're actually breaking away from the GPT series because it's such a different type of model. The new model is called OpenAI 1.0 or 01, OpenAI 01 and OpenAI 01 Mini, which is the smaller version. Yeah, and correct. they both are releasing in preview today and were announced this morning. What's different about the 01 series of models is that they are uh, designed to be good reasoners um, and maybe not so good at everyday chat interactions, things that 4.0 is really good at. So um, it is a new class of models focused on reasoning, really good at hard problems, and Chris and I are going to put it through its paces today and figure out if it's as good uh, as OpenAI claims it is. Awesome, yeah, so I'll go ahead and share the screen. I was lucky enough to get access here. And we'll do a series of prompts, um, just stuff we're coming up off the top of our head. We'll probably uh, do a V2 at some point with uh, ones the community's found out about, but might as well get started. Great, so you should be seeing we got our ChatGPT 01 preview here. And to start, you know, we have to do it. Uh, how many are... Oh, super fast on that one. Yeah, it was really fast. And it, you know, gave us our total of three, which is correct. Um, now, we've seen this on Twitter. We kind of knew this one was going to work out. Uh, but we wanted to, you know, start it off with something we knew it would succeed at that four, you know, previous models were not so good at. Let's see. We got easy ones done. I did see online that it can fail at words in a sentence. So if we can say how many words or in my last prompt. I don't necessarily expect to get this one, this one right. Um, Jacob and I were talking a bit offline about this. This has to do with it counting tokens. Hey, look at that. So, yeah, and this is, it's going pretty quick, right? It, I was expecting it to take longer to think. I mean, and maybe we'll see if we, as we ask it harder and harder things that actually require intelligence, like maybe it will take longer. Um, but this is a pass. Good job. Uh, yeah. Oh, one. Uh, do we want to do your big prompt? Yeah. So let's move on to, to testing its coding ability. I had a chat GPT write up a prompt about uh, generating a web page that generates uh, like a procedure, like procedurally generates a planet. So I, I picked this because it's a, it, it both requires understanding of like code, but also what the visual output of that code will be. And because, stra uh, because strawberry slash oh one doesn't have the ability to actually run the code, it, you know, it, while it will be able to think through the problem and reason a bunch, it won't actually be able to see the final output. So we want to see if it can get there in one go without the ability to like run, let's say run the file and take screenshots as we saw. A uh, quick plug for our Replit try video. We saw yes. that the agents there were able to do that. Okay, hey, start from scratch. Let's give it a shot. Foundation, with new loading experience from OpenAI, trying to give a bit of bit of a notion of what it's doing. Uh, these seem largely canned. Okay, so it's giving us some framing here. Here's how to initially set up the environment. So it didn't really do, it didn't do what we wanted. It just gave us a bunch of code snippets. Can you respond and ask for like a, like a runnable single HTML file so that we can actually test it? Yeah, absolutely. Interesting to see it did give a very long response it included some links in the response that i'm not i have no idea what that is all right it's doing it's doing what we wanted it's doing what we asked for big file big file but that's okay we'll say it's worth calling out that they've clearly done a bunch of work on how it explains itself so knowing that this was going to be a a model that would have to do complex tasks clearly they've trained it and worked on it a bunch to tell it how you're doing it give it an explanation we got references down at the bottom it's showing us examples that it pulled it's showing us the documentation although this just looks like generically the 3gs or 3 I, I can't even like it's not running <laughs> didn't work open ai fail on that one i can give you the the error messages i was i think it kind of bricked the page which is why it was hard for me to get the error messages but this is you know i think this is a good test to see like yeah. um so the errors for the audience were that you know there was a a 404 for some line in the Perlin library that it was importing. So it failed to import. Uh, there was also some sort of content type problem. It might have something to do with how the browser is actually reading the code. So we'll, we'll see what, what the model says. The error occurs because the URL for the noise library is incorrect or outdated. Additionally, there might be some mismatches in function names or library versions. Let's fix these issues. Here's the correct and updated HTML code. Well, that it gives you instructions for how to run it. Didn't really expect it to do that. It's got new messages or new errors. It seems like it fixed the old errors. 
Should we give it one more go and then move All on right. to the next give prompt? Give it one more shot and maybe have it make a puzzle. Before we declare that it's bad at software engineering. <laughs> the errors occur because a version of the simplex noise slide earlier included in the ES module, which isn't directly compatible with script tags and HTML without additional configuration. To resolve these issues, I have switched back to using Noise.js library, which is compatible with browsers and can be included via script without any problems. Here's a correct and fully functional HTML file. Let's see if it told the truth. Been wrong a couple times. And for the audience, we're saying this is a really hard task. Um, <laughs> We kind of expect it to fail, uh, but would have been very impressed if it succeeded. I think it's a medium hard task. I've gotten like Claude Sonnet to do versions of this task. So it's definitely not easy, but I'm also a little surprised that it can't even get something to run, to be honest. Yeah. It's supposed to be super STEM smart. Chris and I were looking at some of these, some of the demos that OpenAI was putting out and you know, some of them are, a lot of them are, in my opinion, not super, they don't demonstrate useful functionality. They demonstrate oh, this LLM is better at limitations of LLMs in the past. They need to show me how getting around those limitations actually helps unlock new scenarios because it currently feels like, oh, it's better at benchmarks. Okay, we still got errors, so. Didn't quite generate the planets, didn't, didn't make a universe for us. Uh, better luck next time, I suppose. Do we want to give it like a slightly easier development task or just kind of move on from coding? Well, I'm curious, they have this whole uh, create a puzzle for me to solve. So if it makes a puzzle, what does that look like? It, yeah, it selected a puzzle, a six by six nonogram puzzle for me to solve, which is where the solve grid looks like the letter Q. Can it solve its own puzzle? That's the question. It should, given this is one of the sample queries. Okay, so these, the, the statements that it's generating are contextual. They're not canned. So they're definitely saying, hey, I know you want me to make a puzzle, so I'm making the puzzle and thinking about it. Mm -hmm. There you go. We open a new thread so it doesn't have the memory of this and say, can you solve this puzzle? Yeah, we said the solution looks like a queue. So we're looking for a queue in the response. So you think what's happening is it comes up with the plan and then it's feeding those steps to this text, describing what's going on? Is it actually following its process or is it just sort of linearly going through the steps it decided on? That's a good question. I mean, I wonder, can you click in and see what it's thinking right now? Okay, so this is its plan. It's saying, analyze the phones, side the cells. And it's adding as it goes. Okay, so this is it explaining what it's doing. That's really cool. A lot of thinking. I ran pretty hard on this. Revisiting assumptions. So here's worth talking about for the audience. Here's something that it's really good at, allegedly, is it it sort of reviews its own work, right? We're used to sort of ChatGPT and others being one shot and it just outputs it and relies on you to say, nope, that was wrong, try again. It has its own loop it's going through. Jacob will talk about it more tactically than me, but it, it's thinking and assessing its own results before showing it to you as a user. So if you're just an average person trying to use this thing, the difference you could expect from this is that it should reason itself about the answer and have an increased likelihood to give you a good result. They also made a claim that this makes it a safer model because it's self-assessing its output, so it's doing its own kind of responsible AI assessment against it to figure out, is this thing right? Is it saying things that are dangerous? Is it saying things that are factually incorrect? And I think it just solved our puzzle. We're expecting a queue. We got a queue. And yeah, there it is. I mean, I, I'm not shocked by this given that it's OpenAI's example, but fun to see yeah. it really work through and try to solve something of some complexity. I don't know how much confidence I would have had earlier models could solve this. Yeah, yeah, no, that is really cool. And just, yeah, like, I, I'm sure earlier models couldn't. Yeah, no, that's very impressive. All right, so should we, should we move on to, like, you know, this was a puzzle that it generated. I have my own puzzle that I made for it um, that I've been using to test some of the current generation models. Um, and it's basically just, like, an abstract reasoning test. There are some rules. There are some emojis that the model can use, and it has to build a string of those emojis based on the rules and get the highest score. Great. Um, so maybe we'll give that a shot and see, see yeah. how well it does. Send me the prompt. Let's see what happens. Will do. Okay, we'll start a new combo with it just to, just to give it a little reset here. Okay, task. Construct the highest scoring string using the given elements and scoring rules. Elements available, four green circles, two blue diamonds, three red squares. String length is nine elements. Scoring rules, a green circle is normally worth one, a blue diamond is worth three, and a red square is worth one. If a red square neighbors a blue diamond, it's worth two X. If a green circle neighbors a green circle, it's worth two X. And if a blue diamond occurs before any instance of a red square, it is worth zero points. We got our prompt in. Goal, construct a string of length nine using the elements provided to achieve the highest possible score based on the above rules. Placing elements strategically, charting points, evaluate. So this is real 
Real feedback it's doing there. It's funny that it added its own emoji here. I don't know if you noticed that little light bulb. By strategically positioning, I'm avoiding this placement. So it's saying it had an idea. Okay. That's our optimal placement. Professor Jacob, how do we score this? It says the possible maximum score of 20 points is what it was going for. A red square, blue diamond, red square, blue diamond, red square, and then four green circles. And it thinks that'll score 20 points. And that assumes, it assumes that is the maximum. So it's interesting that the maximum is actually eight, uh, 18 points. Ah. It scored a 14 out of 18. Okay, let's give us some feedback. Let's talk through why. So one of the rules here is that um, if a blue a blue diamond occurs before any red square, it, it's worth no points. And so it clearly missed that rule. There's really no ambiguity in how that rule is described. And right. in its response, it was putting, um, putting tokens in that position where they were worth no points. So that's why it didn't get close to the maximum. It clearly also misunderstood the rules or was unable to calculate the maximum. I had a, I had a harder test here prepared, like with more rules, but the same format, because I thought that they would get this no problem. I'm actually shocked. GPT-4.0 gets consistently a 16 or 17 on this test. One more chance, but yeah, that is surprising. And this test is all about reasoning. So this is, we're not even asking it to do something it wasn't trained for. Like this is the kind of thing that they show off its ability to do. Reason over a bunch of tokens, respond in a very specific way. What are you thinking here? Much longer. So worth calling out that in the, in the background while this guy's thinking, I did two more runs on GPT-40 and they scored 15 and 16 respectively. So we have 15, 16, 17 out of a possible maximum of 18. Obviously there's some variance, like the models don't perform the same way each time, but so far those are those are all higher scores than 01 got. Okay, give a new pattern, but it, not that new, it just moved. So it did a lot of thinking, so it switched a red and a blue, yeah. that's all it did. Yeah. Which I think will actually increase the score because it moved that blue out of range, but the first blue is still worth nothing. So now it scored 17. So th this is the same response we got from 40 in the first in the first place. Interesting, interesting. So not a marked improvement there. Did not find the optimal solution, right? You said 18 is possible. 18 is possible, yep. And this is a pretty simple, this, the solution on this one, I gave this one first because it's a pretty simple version of this test. Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, from from this set of tests, my impressions is that this thing kind of sucks. <laughs> um, honestly, like yeah, it, I, I didn't try anything that I haven't been able to do with other models, really. Um, and it, I'm like a little shocked at how bad it is. It it seems like a, like it was really catered to the benchmarks, and so I'm honestly not sure what the value is here. I hope other people find it. And let me know. Yeah, I'm excited to see stuff from the community. Uh, maybe we'll do another video of like a community roundup of things people have tried and succeeded with. It could be possible we're just using it wrong, but yeah, interesting results. All right, yeah, thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments if you saw different results and if we're missing something here, but yeah. this is pretty tough. Jacob, unimpressed is the, is the final, uh, final answer for now. Well, thanks everybody. Like and subscribe as always. Cheers everybody.